Relationship advice. Update. Best friend's little sister, 20 female, says her son is my, 27 male, son, but got upset when I asked to get a DNA test? Original post. Basically, my best friend's little sister says that her baby 2 male, technically 1 in 4 months, is my kid, I don't remember sleeping with her, literally ever. Not 2 years ago, not since then because I've never been into her because she's not my type. But she says that I'm the one that got her pregnant because apparently, we got drunk and had intercourse, this story wouldn't be too outlandish because me and her brother, 26 male, used to go out and party a lot, and she used to tag along because you can drink at 18 here and she was like 18 almost 19, so she always made us bring her. But it's kind of bugs me how she apparently knew the whole time and said nothing, didn't get me to sign the birth certificate, no child support, not even hinting at it. And then all of a sudden last week, by the way, Jumbo is your son. Like no. So obviously I asked for a DNA test because I want to see if he's my kid, and she was like offended and upset, and basically went, he clearly looks like you, he has black hair, so do you, you're Mexican, he clearly looks Mexican. Which makes no sense because she's also Mexican and also has black hair, so just because I do, doesn't automatically mean it's my kid. Really it could just look like her, and I kind of feel that was some stupid random excuse. But now my friend is pissed at me for one, apparently knocking up his sister, and two, asking her for a DNA test. I'm not really sure what to do so I'm turning to internet strangers, I don't want to be an a-hole here so I'm just wondering what I can do. Now for the top advice before reading the update. Get the test. Feelings aside, it's necessary to clarify if the child is yours. The fact that she refuses, means she knows that he more than likely isn't the father. She's decided just because her son has dark hair, like both him and her, and is Mexican, also like him and her, that he has to be the father. If OP has a good paying job, that is probably why she decided after two years he's the father. I would take her to court to get a court-ordered paternity test. Then it's legal that he's not the father or is. Either they agree to a DNA test, or tough luck for the both of them. You're not doing anything wrong. If she's so sure, why is she against the test? I don't know man, she just went all, oh okay, so you don't trust me? And started flipping the hell out. Why would you ever just trust her word over something so serious and life changing? Of course you don't trust her. The audacity. Exactly, thank you. Like maybe if when she was pregnant she was like, hey this is your kid, then maybe I would have gone without questioning that. But out of the blue nearly two years later? Hell no, pass me the test. Stop talking to her and get a lawyer. Don't say or do anything potentially compromising unless lawyer says you're safe to do so. This includes asking her for a test, which could be viewed as implicit admission that you have had intercourse. Lawyer up and stop listening to anything else I have to say, or anyone else on this thread. I second this OP. If they ever plan to come after you for child support, you need to be ready and protect yourself. Well, I mean if it's actually my kid I have no problem paying up. And I'm sure most judges, if she tried to come after me legally for support, would have no problem with a demand of a test first, considering we never dated, to my knowledge we never slept together, and she has made no remarks or even insinuating the possibility of me being the father until now. And now for the update. This post blew up way more than I ever imagined it would, so I kind of felt like you guys deserved an update. But first there's some things I should probably clarify. Firstly, Yes the kid's name is actually Jumbo, and sadly, it's too late to change it so I truly pity him there. And secondly, to all the people who said she was either lying now or has been lying for 2 years, technically more than 2 because she's about to turn 21 in 2 months, and the kid is 1 year and 4 months then another 9 months for pregnancy, she's been lying to me for 2 years. I managed to convince her to do an at home test that we got online, and the results came back 3 days ago. She was in fact correct about him being my son. She basically admitted that when we, me, her, and her brother, went to visit her cousin as a late 18th birthday present, I got really drunk and she decided to sleep with me because she assumed I wouldn't remember, and that if I did, I wouldn't be mad at her, and I'm not particularly mad about the sleeping with me when I was drunk. I'll be honest, it's the fact that she didn't tell me that pissed me off, and then she ended up getting pregnant and just figured that me not knowing wouldn't be a big deal, but now she feels guilty. And why was her brother so mad? Because apparently, he knew I was the dad from the start. So basically, 
I missed what could have been the best year in four months of my life because she neglected telling me something she knew for a fact until now. We're both talking to a lawyer currently about a custody agreement, which I don't think I would have realized I needed to do without Reddit, so thank you guys for helping me through this. Now for some top comments. Wait, your friend knew from the beginning that his sister was having your kid and never told you? And then had the nerve to be mad at you? Shouldn't you be the one that's supposed to be upset? I don't get it. Make it make sense. This is exactly how I feel right now, like what the hell bro? That whole family is nuts. His sister for violating you and keeping your son from you, and your friend for being an accomplice. You should reevaluate that friendship. Change this child's name please. How does someone name their child that in the first place? Now get a proper test, not a home test. Because she could have contaminated the home test. Nah, I handled it all as I wouldn't let her near it. I'm naive, but I'm not reckless my friend. You have to get paternity established through the courts. They don't accept home DNA tests as proof. It needs to be official to be legal. Yeah, and we'll do that. That's what my lawyer is for, but I'm allowed to be happy and say that it's good enough for me for the time being. Now for the next story. How do I, 29 male, make my long lost daughter feel at home after not knowing her for the first 11 years of her life? Early in January, I got a call from my fiance, 25 female, that I had to come home right away and she sounded panicked. I rolled up to the front door and see my fiancé and a young black girl, we are both white, sitting on the porch that was claiming to be my daughter. I come from a moderately wealthy southern family, and unfortunately, my father was not really that accepting of other cultures and skin colors of people. I was his golden son and he always paid for everything that I needed including my house and college. This gave me quite the ego when I was younger and got around a lot. One woman that I had a fling with when I was in high school was black, and we always kept it on the down low until she got pregnant. I told my father when she was 6 months pregnant, and he sort of took over the situation. He demanded a paternity test from her, and then he claimed to me that he found out the baby was not mine. Being the stupid 17 year old kid at the time, I thought I had dodged a bullet, and the woman quickly stopped texting me after that. Fast forward to the present. My father did not take social distancing too seriously and ended up catching the virus from his golfing buddy before Christmas. He passed away and did not get all of his affairs in order before his passing. I have since found out that he has been essentially paying hush money to my daughter's grandpa for the past 11 years, and he meant to set aside a trust fund for her before he died without me ever knowing, because he wanted me to have a normal life and not be a single dad to a biracial daughter. When my dad died suddenly. Her grandpa stopped receiving money and decided to drive the girl to my house and dump her with my fiancé on our doorstep. This whole thing has been a whirlwind, but her mom's side of the family is mostly old and not really capable of supporting her without the money that my dad was sending anyways. Of course I got another paternity test and confirmed that the girl is in fact mine, I also called the police to come get the girl before I knew she was mine, because I did not think it was okay for her to be with strange people she had never met. Everything with CPS and custody and courts has been an absolute nightmare, her mom has not been found, but essentially the girl is staying with my fiancé and I starting last week to see if it will be a good fit on a permanent basis. The biggest problem is that, she has been taught that my family rejected her because she is black, and that we would never accept her. I learned this because we went to family counseling sessions before she was allowed to live at my house, and a lot of stuff came out. She does not call me dad and she barely comes out of her room except to grab meals. My fiancé has been super accepting of the girl, but she has been annoyed with my late father and has taken a lot of her anger out on me. I have been accused of being complicit in my dad's action by basically everyone, including the social workers, and I am completely emotionally drained by everything now. Despite this, I really wanted to make it work out with my daughter, but I feel like the 11-year absence from her life combined with the race dynamics may make it impossible for us to have a good relationship going forward. Do you guys think I have any chance of making this work out? Would you all do anything different? I really need some outside perspectives on this one. Now for the top advice. I would start with continuing going to the family counseling or seeing a psychologist. In addition to that, start by having a serious conversation with her how you didn't follow up the situation, and that you are sorry for the damage done. Maybe you also add that you would like to build a father-daughter relationship, but you aren't sure how to do it. Allow yourself to be vulnerable, and admit your mistakes. Ask her open-ended questions, whether there are activities that she would like to do with you, what she hopes a father would be like. By asking those questions, 
she might open up to you. In addition to that I would also start setting up an agenda with your partner and child. By example, Saturday is date night with only your partner. So you both can gain some energy. At the same time, maybe she can meet the family of her mother. Next, plan weekly father-daughter fiancé moments. By example, each Sunday, go to the zoo, that kind of thing. If I were in your shoes, I would ask her what she likes, wants, expects, fears. That shows that you're committed and interested in trying to make this work. Be careful of negative self-fulfilling prophecies. Despite this, I really wanted to make it work out with my daughter, but I feel like the 11-year absence from her life combined with the race dynamics, may make it impossible for us to have a good relationship going forward. She needs to continue therapy. You need to get into therapy with her as well. This poor girl was basically abandoned by both parents, and then was abandoned again when your grandfather died because of money. You being white, doesn't make it impossible for you to raise her. I say this as a mixed person with a white mom. She was raised black, so educate yourself on black culture, the issues black folks face, etc. Show her love and care. Instead of letting her stay in her room all day, think of fun family activities you and your fiancé can do with her. It'll be a long road but she needs to feel that familial bond. Remember, she's black but she's also white. She's half of you. There will be challenges with her being biracial that even black parents can lack experience with show an interest in her. Also, it doesn't hurt to ask black folks questions when it comes to raising your daughter, don't demand it though of course. There are groups all over social media dedicated to helping parents with mixed children. Just want to acknowledge how strong your fiancé must be, accepting this situation is definitely something not everyone could do. Please also make sure that she knows how important it is to you, and how appreciative you are of her. I get that your focus is on your daughter right now but please make sure your fiancé still feels loved and on top of your priorities. Yes. This situation could have been much worse if fiancé wasn't amazing. She's had to make a lot of adjustments to do, and she isn't a bad person if she eventually decides all this is too much for her. Now for the last story. Grandparents, 60s, have re-entered my, female 19, life, after my mother died. They've asked that I move across the country to be with them. I've never even met them. I grew up in a dysfunctional, poor, and at times, dangerous family. My mom was an alcoholic and moderate user of substances, while my father was on disability for a while but also a heavy user. He was in and out of our lives. He'd come into it for a couple of years at a time and then disappear. My mom drank and would do D's when she could score some. We moved every couple of months, and I grew up in poverty. For a time, I was in foster care because of DCS. I never knew my mother's family and only occasionally met my father's family. My father kept saying that my mom was from somewhere on the east coast, and they had a nice life and were very powerful. He once told me they tried to ruin their lives, so I never had a positive opinion of them. I didn't want to come across their path and have them hurt me too. My mom died from alcohol-related liver and kidney disease two years ago, and I received emails from people who were my mom's family asking about a funeral. We didn't have one. I received a letter saying that if I ever wanted to meet my grandparents, that I could always contact them, and it told me how. I was furious. I couldn't believe they knew how to reach us. My dad used to beat me, screamed at me and tormented me. My mother would get drunk and egg him on, and then pretend to be sorry. They exposed me to people who actually abused me. My mother would get high at a friend's house, and he'd do awful things. My mother drank our grocery money, 
hawked everything I ever had, and basically kept us as poor as possible. She died at 37 but looked like she was 70. Her hair was gray, her teeth missing, and the skin on her face sagged. I was so angry that they could have gotten me out of this but let me suffer. I let a year go by, but figured that I should eventually learn about my background, medical history and the like. My father is gone again, so I probably won't hear from him for several years, so I figured because COVID, it would be hard to meet in person and it would be easier to keep things online. I connected with them via email and received a follow-up from my grandmother almost immediately. We exchanged emails, she scanned me photos my mom had sent. I finally asked her why she never came to help. I got an email back that was huge. It described numerous attempts to step in, to try and get custody, but how they were blocked. There was detail about a court case, which I vaguely remember. Turns out my grandparents tried to get Arizona courts to send a minor child to South Carolina, which they refused. My grandmother said it was the biggest regret in her life that she couldn't save me. She said they even considered hiring bounty hunters, but he talked them out of it. I met them on Skype and seeing them was shocking. They're in their mid-60s but look like they're no older than 50. My grandfather bikes every day, is a practicing surgeon and volunteer at local groups. My grandmother is a retired physician who now rehabs animals and looks after her other grandchildren as much as she can. I have two aunts and an uncle, all of them are doctors and they all look so much like my mom. They even have her weird southern drawl. My aunts cried a lot and my uncle offered to help any way he could. It was so bizarre to see them, so weird to see people who remind me of my mother. I asked what happened and got a very interesting story. My mom was a normal person but hit her head at 15 and just completely lost it, my mom had a weird dent in her skull. They tried everything, but lost her to D's. Experts said to cut her off to stop supporting her habits. What surprised me was that my mom had told me something similar once. She was on an ice bender and told me this bizarre story of falling out a window and being a changed person. She often said weird things when she was doing too much ice, but I guess that one was true. Over the last 7 months we've Skyped one to two times a week. They've begun sending me money and even gave me a credit card for emergencies. Recently though, they made me an offer, leave Arizona and move in with them. They'll pay for school, help me out financially and get me good health insurance. They want the best for me and said they'll send trucks to get my things and fly me east. I've never met them in person, and I've never really left where I live. Suddenly they're asking me to go live with them. I was shocked and terrified, but also, it's finally a way out. I've always wanted to be a vet, but my grades in high school were crap. They said they have ways to help and not to worry. I could finally do something and get away from working at Walmart. Part of me thinks this is the best option. Part of me worries about what it would mean. The thing is, so far everything they've ever said makes perfect sense. My mom did have a head injury. I do remember going to court and hearing about court cases. My father told me that my grandparents were powerful people and to fear them, but their whole family seems normal. I gather they all attend church pretty regularly, which I don't. But other than that, they don't seem to be bad or difficult people. I have nobody to talk to about this. I'm so sick of being poor that I could scream, and this would make everything different. I just don't have anyone's outside perspective. Now for the top advice. Take them up on their offer. As someone who came from a neglectful and abusive home and gained contact with my grandmother at 22, after 4 years no contact with my mother, it was the absolute best thing that ever happened to me. I'm almost 31 now and my grandmother has changed my life, just with her love and support. It feels like you have the opportunity to have that, times 2. Not going for it would be a mistake. It sounds like they genuinely love you and always have, but weren't allowed access to you, just like my nana. Worst case scenario. You hate it there and it doesn't work out. You still haven't lost anything. Best case, you gain the almost parental relationships that you were missing, you gain unconditional love and support for the first time, and your entire life is better for it. I'm so glad you found each other. Wishing you all of the luck and love. I love your answer, but would like to add a caveat. Such a drastic change in lifestyle, from an abusive and neglectful home, to a caring, possibly even strict, by comparison, home might be a really hard change, even if everyone has the best intentions. You've essentially been raising yourself, and it might be hard to feel as if you're being treated like a child. If OP does feel this way, I urge her to consider family therapy. Abusive homes rarely teach you how to communicate and compromise, and that's basically the foundation of any healthy relationship. There's also a chance you might self-sabotage. 
No shame in it, it's natural that if you've been treated horribly, you often don't feel worthy of anything other than horrible. Hopefully personal therapy will help you if this proves to be a problem. Good luck, OP. Go. Please. Your ship has just come in. It won't be easy, there will be a culture shock but if they are as genuine as your story seems, you will be surrounded by love. I want you to go and post a big update 6 months from now about how much better your life is. I'm pulling for you. And remember that at times their love and support may seem intrusive because it's not something you're used to, it may feel like they're trying to control you. Stay calm, talk it out and explain your feelings. I get the impression that they'd be open to listening and it may result in some good growth. Most of us go through this when we're young with our parents so we often rebel. In your case, you have the gift of maturity and it appears from what I'm reading you're well equipped to handle those types of conversations. This is a great second shot at life, I would take it. I was given a similar chance by a family friend, and it changed my life forever. I got to go to college and had so much more opportunity than I would have ever had otherwise, and I am so much better for it that I can't explain in less than 1000 pages. Your father had his own relationship with them and I suspect they didn't like him, so I would not base your opinion of them on his works. If they have no one else, you could be their caretaker down the road at some point, something to consider. Your efforts would likely be rewarded given how generous they sound. Good luck. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.